for people who might be having ideas of um, struggling with ideas that uh, of of hopelessness or, or worthlessness, um, having having thoughts like I'm totally worthless, and having uh, wrestling with with things like that, or, or um, how how would mindfulness either from a Christian or a non-Christian perspective help somebody who's wrestling with these these thoughts? Okay, so that that's a great question. I mean, and and. And good. I mean, you're a resident psychiatrist. It says it right on the poster. And 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 soon he's going to be a real psychiatrist, right? <laughs> so watch out. I mean, so um, um, look, the, the you know obviously the mental health applications of, of mindfulness, you know, are, are get a lot of attention now, and and a significant amount of them are actually reasonably well deserved. So let's let's just use that one example, and especially with the way I've explained mindfulness, it becomes very straightforward, be, 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 because. If, if you want to use cognitive therapy on a depressed person who has symptoms of, you know, major affective disorder, okay, which is you're, you're describing common symptoms of major affective disorder, depressed, depression, right? The, you know, the biology of that condition, not only the biology from a Christian perspective, but the bi biology, you know, you, know, you know, brings in thoughts I'm no good, it would be better if I wasn't alive. I mean, I, and, you know, and those thoughts definitely correlate, we could even kind of almost say cause, right, people to do self-harm, right? I mean, now, with mindfulness, you, you can become more aware, and John Teasdale, friend of mine, you know, developed a cognitive mindfulness base, it's, MBCT, it's not a very established thing now. Mindfulness-based cognitive therapy. And in fact, uh, Williams, I forget his first name now, a close friend and colleague of Teasdale, has a book called Mindfulness-Based Cognitive Therapy for Suicide, right? I mean, what's, what, you know, how does it work? The basic way it works is, has everything to do with what we said about the self in this talk is now you're having these thoughts, but when you have the training to just view them as mental distractions, you know, and like you're making some assessment, discernment, you know, is this really true? That's where the cognitive part comes in. Is this really true? And, and you do everything you can with, the, you know, therapy and writing down, you know, to see it's not, it's false. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's simply not true that, you know, everybody wants you to not be here. All of these false things that people say. The mindfulness part that Teasdale and Williams added in, which I think is very synergistic, is it enhances you being able to say, and, you know, I shouldn't, I don't have to identify with this, you know, th th to use this, this is not myself. Now, I mean, actually, those, Williams is Christian, as a matter of fact, and, 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 and John Teasdale has become actually a, a serious Buddhist. I mean, he would call himself a Buddhist. I mean, um, so both of them ag agree that, and, and from a Christian perspective and, you know, from a, a, a Buddhist perspective, I mean, I, that when you get a thought saying, you know, you should kill yourself, that is not yourself. That is just an impermanent suffering. I mean, to use the word suffering in its major way, I mean, non -sa not satisfactory, painful, suffering. It's impermanent, painful suffering. It's not yourself. And, and so what the mindfulness part does in the Teasdale-Williams approach is help you go, that's just a false, and, and I coined the term for it, you know, I coined the term for it, deceptive brain message. So in my book, You Are Not Your Brain, we call that a deceptive brain message. But the key to the mindfulness-based cognitive therapy part is not only realizing it's false, which is the cognitive part, but really, really realizing it's just passing through, don't cling on to it, it's not you, it's your brain, you are not your brain. Great title for a book. That's why we used it. I mean, and I mean that, that's what it means to say you are not your brain. I mean, your brain is doing that. It's not you. I mean, so you know, so that's how the mindfulness, you know, and I obviously do a very similar thing to that with obsessive compulsive disorder.